Hey everybody, this is Matt with MattsMath.com. Thanks for joining us here today as we talk about how to find surface area of prisms and pyramids and even some cones. We are in the Math Common Core Standard, Geometry, and uh, today we're going to be understanding and solving real-world and mathematical problems involving surface area of pyramids and prisms. And this is our guiding question of how can we use a net and uh, to find a surface area of prisms and pyramids, as well as getting those formulas that you might need to memorize to get the surface area. So let's do that. Here is some examples of where you would need to use surface area. Here is a funny example. This is a cake that I baked for my daughter here. Uh, her birthday is near Thanksgiving, and we call it Thanks Jaden, since her name is Jaden. And uh, this is a little turkey that I made. Pretty good. It looks good, huh? Yummy. All right, and this is a pyramid. So, and then uh, we could talk about how to find the surface area of the outside of the pyramid. How much, if we went in and wanted to embark upon a journey of painting this pink, how much paint would you need to paint this pyramid pink? Because, you know, seeing a pink pyramid in the desert would be pretty cool. All right, let's do it. All right, so if you've never really talked about what a net is, it's not some girl that might be in your class. No, a net is something that you would do to a shape. For example, here, it's taking a 2D or a 3D shape and opening it up. So imagine this was a rectangle or rectangular prism where we take this, fold it up, fold this side up, fold this side up, and then up and then over. So this would become an actual rectangular prism or a square prism. Same thing with this guy. You fold this one up, fold this one up, and so forth. Imagine there's a piece of paper and fold it up. Well, with a net, you can take it and you can find the area of this shape, this shape, and so forth, and add them all up together, and that's your surface area. Okay? So if you've never worked with that before, that's what we're going to be talking about. It's surface area, how to find it. So here's a couple little bit more definitions we're going to talk about. Surface area is basically the sum of the areas of each of the lateral sides and the bases. Well, Okay, great, but what are lateral sides? Lateral sides are, hey, you know what? The sides. They are the sides here, bam, bam, everything around the edge there. Whereas the base is that shape that's on the top and the bottom. If you stood it upright and the shape was the same on the top and the bottom, those are the bases, okay? So the base is here and in the back, here and on the bottom there. All right, so let's find surface areas using nets. Let's start with prisms, all right? All right, let's find surface area using a net with this guy. Can you imagine what this rectangular prism would look like if we unfolded it? Kind of use your mind's eye there and imagine taking this guy apart. What do you think it would look like? All right, why don't you try and draw it? Here's kind of what I think it would look like. Something like this. So you have a bigger rectangle, three smaller ones, another bigger one, and another small one there. And let's label the dimensions. So this is going to be 2, this will be 8, this will be 8, this will be 7, this will also be 2 right here. And so now what we do is we find the actual area of each of these shapes. So this right here is going to be 16, right? 2 times 8, 16 there. 2 times 7 is 14, 14, 64, Oh, not 64, 7 times 8, which is 56, and 56 there. So now that's pretty easy, huh? All you got to do is just take all of those dimensions and add them up. So we've got those six areas. We add them up, and we get 172. If we wanted to do it a different way, notice that I did 2 times 7, and there's two of those shapes, 2 times 2 of those 8 by 7 rectangles, and 2 of those 2 by 8 rectangles. So add them all up together, and remember our units would be meters squared, because it is an area. All right, what would this shape look like if we used the net? You draw it? Why don't you try drawing it and see what you get? All right, remember, write all those specific dimensions down. All right, and here's what it would look like. You'd take it, you'd open it up, imagine this, bring this back up that way, that way, folding that over, and that over, and then you would be writing all the dimensions in there. 
And again, you'd find the area of a triangle. Remember, the triangle area is one half the base times the height. And then you'd find the area of this rectangle, this rectangle, and so forth. Add them all up together, and you get 226.56 meters squared. Give you a quick back look at the tent here. All right. So now, pyramids. Let's just talk about what uh, so a couple different definitions here of what a pyramid is. There is only one base. This little square down here at the bottom. There's one base. And what would this shape look like? If you can see down there, kind of a little bit of a hint. You would take this triangle, flap it open. This triangle, flap it open. Bam! That one too. All right. So notice that you've got five by five by five by five. Okay. The vertex is up top there. One of the things you might be seeing. And then this is what's called a lateral face. This side right here. That's called a lateral face because it faces on the outside. And then this right here is called the slant height. The slant height is the height of the triangle on the outside of that lateral face. So there it is. The height right there. All right. So the height of that was 8. So when we look at it, you've got 8 there. So the area of this triangle is 5 times 8 divided by 2. So this is 20. This is 20. This is 20. And this is 20. So there's four of them. So you could just do 4 times 20, and bam, there you go. That's the area of the, all the lateral faces, and then the area of the square on the inside, which is just 5 by 5. And then you add them all up. Surface area is that bottom base plus the lateral faces, and that's your surface area. Now, there's a way we can do it using formulas. So let's figure out those formulas real quick. If we look at it, we think about it. This is our rectangular prism here. How many bases do we have? We have one here, and then we have one over there. So our formula is pretty much going to be 2 times the area of that base, capital A being the area of the bottom and the top over there. And then, if you can imagine taking the perimeter of that square or that bottom base shape and sliding it along the height, making an outside hollow shape. So you take it and just imagine sliding it along so you would take the perimeter and multiply it by the height. And that's it. So here's your formula. Surface area of prism is 2 times the area of the base plus the perimeter of the base times the height. Now the height here is the distance between the two bases, so from the back and the front. The H stands for the height between the bases there. Okay, so nothing really difficult there. You just have to be able to find the area of the base and the perimeter of the base, and then multiply it by the height, add it to two of the areas, and you're good to go. Okay, so that's your formula. All right, now with pyramids, a little different. We've got our lateral faces there, and notice, remember, how many bases do we have? Well, we only have one, so we have one A here. So we'll add A to n, which n is the number of lateral faces we have here, or the number of sides. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, because it's a square, it's a rectangle in the bottom. So we've got 4, so n here would be 4, and then L stands for the area of the lateral face. So you have to find the area of that triangle there, okay? So n stands for the number of lateral faces, or the number of the sides of the base, and then L stands for the area of the lateral face. Okay. All right, now with cones, a little different. Cones, again, you have one base, so that would be the area of the base, which is pi r squared, area of that circle. And then the outside, imagine cutting it open, then that's going to look something like Pac-Man with this little monster head growing out of there. It's pi times the radius times the length. So let's look at that a little bit further in depth. The L there is the slant height. Okay, the slant height here from the top vertex down back to the bottom. All right, so A stands for the area of the base, pi r squared, like we said, plus pi times the radius times L, which is the slant height, which is that vertex to the bottom of the cone. Here's the net. Here's what the net would look like. Again, like I said, it's going to be some some 
sing like a chomp monster, plus this little abnormal head growing out the side of it. You got the circle, which is the base, R, and then the perimeter here, some of the perimeter, and then taken out with this pizza slice. So it's L is that slant height. This is the lateral surface area, and the way you find that would be just pi R times L, the slant height. Okay, so that's how you find the surface area of a cone. Now, why don't you work on these using our formulas. Let's work on this one. All right, so now we're going to ask ourselves a couple questions about what's the base, the height, and the perimeter. So our base there is this triangle because you've got one triangle here and the other triangle there. Those where everything else is in between there. And then, so we have to figure out the area of that base. So we're going to find the area of a triangle, which is 8 by 6, and then multiply by half. So that gives us 24. Well, we have two of those, so we'll look at those here in just a second, but we notice we've got two of those. Then we, what's the height of the prism? What's the distance between this triangle and that triangle? Well, it's 12. And then we're figuring out the, per the perimeter of the base, so it's 24. So when we put all that together, we get two bases of 24, and then the perimeter, which is also 24, times 12, which is the height of the prism. And we get... 336 centimeters squared. Okay, because it is surface area. Area is squared. All right, why don't you work through this guy? Figure out what's the base, the height, and the perimeter, and then tell me what the surface area is. All right, how'd you do it? Did you get it? A little bit easier with the formula, isn't it? That way you don't have to figure out every little individual piece or rectangle area. You just got to plug numbers into the formula. Right. Here's what you should have got, 294 inches squared. All right, once you do this pyramid, you got a square pyramid on the bottom. It's 11 by 11. Slant height is 14. So what's the base going to be? Well, we get 11 by 11 for that bottom guy. And then the area of this top triangle is going to be the slant height is 14. So you got to figure out the area of that. So this is our base, 11 by 11, and then the area of this triangle is 14 times 11, and take half of that, but there's four of them, so four times those guys. Add them all up, and you get 429. All right, and then here's a cone. Remember, you're given the radius, slant height is 6, plug it back in your formula. You should have something like this, 2 squared times pi plus pi times 2 times 6. Add it all up, and you get 16 pi feet squared. If you multiply it out 16 by pi, totally fine. That works as well. All right. Now, you can work backwards as well. If you are given the area of the base, well, just add that to the areas of all of the triangles around the edges. Pretty easy, huh? So if you have some odd shape like this, they give you the area. So you just start with that. No big deal. Pretty easy. All right. You should have got something like this, 60, about 1,609 centimeters squared there. All right. Once you pause the video, do these two on your own. Notice with 10, you've got a triangle as a base here. So you have really essentially four triangles, but uh, the bottom one's a little different. All right, and then once you guys do these problems as well. Okay, here are your answers. How'd you do? How you doing? Think you're doing good? I bet you are. If you need some help, definitely go back and uh, rewind the video and check out what you need help with, okay? That's pretty much it for today as we talked about how to find surface area of prisms and pyramids and cones. Especially when we're decorating a fun cake like that. Can't wait to see what kind of cakes you guys make. All right. Well, this is Matt with MattsMath.com. Thanks for joining us. Check us out on Facebook at Solving Maths Problems or on Twitter, Matt's Math. And enjoy math.